Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today I want to try a simple modification to my Norwood mill that I think is going to really enhance uh, the capabilities of what we can do and allow me to use up some of my uh, shorter butt logs that I have here. And the modification is simply just going to be this uh, piece of plate steel that, uh, that a friend of mine cut out. So let me show you what I've got. So if you're new to the channel, quick recap, uh, Lumbermate LM29, which is kind of their mid-grade mill, uh, has just a couple modifications to it. We added the, the bed extension so we can go out to uh, 14 feet, so it's a little longer there. We've got the trailer package, that's why it's lifted off the ground as much as it is. And uh, I really think that's the only mod that I added, 14 horse engine, uh, so that's the standard. So no other real modifications. So when you buy this mill stock, it comes with two log dogs or log supports, and I'll show you those. So as you can see, these two supports are just simple adjustment pieces, brackets mounted here to one of the, the bunk beds of the, um, of the mill. Uh, just a simple adjustment, you can lift it up to any height. Got some additional elements here to offset the log if you need to. So you can put those at any height that you want. And the whole point of that, of course, is to keep the log on the bed. As the blade is running through it, the blade runs that way. And of course, the force of the blade wants to push the log off. So if there wasn't any support there, the log would twist and bind and, and you get your blade in a bind, or it would shove the, uh, the log off the side of the bed, which is what you don't want to happen. So the default install position of these two components, because you get two when you buy this mill, is to be eight feet apart. The distance of that one closer to the carriage in this is exactly eight feet. So if I have an eight foot log or longer, then I'm in good shape. I've got an opportunity to hold both ends of the log, keep it really secured. It's not gonna go anywhere. Now I could obviously, if I wanna do shorter material, I could obviously remove that one and move it back further or move that one forward. And that would allow me to do six foot since every uh, the, the bunks are two feet apart. So I could go down to six foot material but then when I do 14 foot, that kind of puts all of the strain and all the hold on one end and really makes things a little weird. It gets a little shaky if you get to the end of a uh, 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot log, you start to get some extra shake there. So you want to have that support spread out more. And with that standard package, you get this one log dog or clamp that uh, slides in, of course, has a little thumb screw at the top here to tighten that down to, to really bite and hold the log into place. So Two rests and one dog is what comes with the kit. So about 20 years ago, when I had the Lumbermate 2000, uh, I had that mill back in, well, I bought it back in 2000, 2001, I believe. And if you follow the channel, you know that I, I traded it off to my brother many years ago. He still has that mill and uses it, but the one thing that I've discovered that, that I miss about some of the elements of that mill was each bed used to have a tab welded here at the end. And that tab would help hold the log. Once you had it squared into a cant, it would help hold it. So you really wouldn't need your main supports, your main log rests here. And I've wondered why didn't Norwood include that tab on the Lumbermate 29, the LM29. And maybe it's just uh, cost savings. That's just an additional element that they have to incorporate. And since this is midline, I don't know if the HD36 actually has those or not, to come to think of it. I know the, I know the bed, the bunks are completely different. So that's where this metal plate comes into play. I want to modify the mill by just simply adding this to one of the bunks here in the middle, and it'll produce a little tab that once I get my cant squared on a shorter log, it'll stay in place, and I don't have to worry about my sacrificial boards and all the things that I normally use when I try to mill smaller wood. So a good friend of mine, his teenage son is really into um, fabricating metalwork, so he, I gave him a piece of cardboard as a template. I said, hey man, cut this out with your plasma cutter and dress it up just the way I have it here and I think this will work. So we're gonna attach that and give it a dry run here and see how it works.
All right, so now just to line that up, if I drop these all down, these are made with a little lip, especially if you don't hit them with a saw blade and cut the tips off them. The lip goes there to hold the cant in place. So if I take my really nice straight piece of poplar that I milled the other day, nest it up against there, of course I can line this up now. Get exactly where I need. So the idea is to keep this a certain height. So when my carriage is at its lowest setting, which is uh, just a little under one inch, I can still clear this tab without obviously damaging the blade. So that's why it's as small as it is. All right, so now it's time to put a log on and we're actually gonna test it. And this tab fix, and I know what a lot of you guys are saying, wait a minute, Troy, you haven't accounted for this X. And you're correct. So you're, you're getting ahead of me here, most likely. But I'm gonna show you what we normally do. And yeah, this, this fix is about, a, it takes care of about 75% of the problem. But there's additional modification we're working on that'll take care of 100% of the problem. But let's get this short poplar log on here first and see what we can do. So this butt log at its longest point is about 80 inches. So just a little over six feet. So of course it normally would not mill very easily with my log rest being eight feet apart. So what I normally do in this situation is place a piece of sacrificial timber here, a piece of board or whatever, something that's rigid enough that isn't going to bow with all that force coming this direction. That little tab is going to help already keep that from happening. But once I get this squared, then I don't need this piece anymore. In the past, I would still need this to keep the cant from coming off. So we're gonna square the log first, and then we should be able to remove this. In the past, when I've had my sacrificial board here, then I literally have had to sacrifice it because as I come through and slice down, I end up cutting this down. Usually I'd turn those into sticker boards, spacers for the wood, but there's times I don't want to rip down my wood. I want to be able to keep it. So this tab is going to help keep me from sacrificing my sacrificial board.
Okay, so even before squaring the cant, I can re remove my sacrificial board and utilize this new tab. So that'll first allow me to put those dogs down, or those log rests. So there, that's just, even though I've got a little bit of wane there, that's just enough tab to keep that in place. So now I don't have to have any clamps. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the squaring of this and of course rip it down to boards. Unfortunately, I had a lot of core rot in that log. I didn't realize it, man. There wasn't any evidence on the outside of that log. The butt, uh, the actual stumpage was clean. Uh, the top was clean, but there was just some core rot starting in the middle. Oh, well. But uh, so halfway through, or when I saw that core rot, I didn't want to just keep getting a bunch of 10-inch wide boards with the centers rotted out, turned it 90 degrees so I could start making some two-bys, at least be able to eliminate the rot. What was neat was I was able to slide it down further so I could use one of the log rests to keep it from tipping, but still use the tab to keep it in place. So that's the beauty of putting this tab in the center and move it forward or backward. So that allowed me to move it forward. And uh, then this final pass I did, I put it on its lowest setting just to make sure. So that's the lowest setting the mill cut. That's a, a true one inch or a true four quarter. And you can see it just uh, had about a quarter inch to play with there. So it, uh, Cut fine. Again, we got some core rod right here, but got some decent looking poplar boards. So this tab obviously worked out great. Um, ideally, I'll go back to my buddy Lachlan and say, hey buddy, can you make me about maybe three or four more of those? And we can put those in place there, even get down to where I can mill two, uh, two foot stuff. Now, one other modification that I'm thinking about and would love your guys' input, so comment below what you think. Now keep in mind, we want this to be poor man's engineering. If we're going to get into a bunch of costs and a bunch of fabrication, and then of course just go buy the extra support from Norwood. What we're looking for is on the cheap. My thought is if we could modify this or add an additional attachment to it, maybe put an extended bolt here with some washers that then just has another piece of plate that you can fold up. It's almost like extending a pocket knife. So it would just come up, have a little bite on it, and, uh, and it would have to be small enough that the typical log I mill, uh, when I'm trying to square it, doesn't come in contact with it, but of course tall enough that it actually bites. So that's limiting, uh, but trying to figure out a way to easily just have something come up, lock into place vertically, and then when you don't need it, just drop it back down. Again, all the force is exerted that way. But I'd be curious to see what you guys, uh, some of you uh, workshop engineers come up with some really neat stuff. So uh, give me some input on that, what you think. Again, we're trying to keep, keep it on the cheap here. 
Well, Cam and I are off to our next project. We've got plenty of daylight to burn, so we've got to move on to something else. But really appreciate everybody watching. Take care.